My, 26 male, partner, 29 female, is scaring me. Last night after drinking my partner woke me up in the middle of the night by choking me. She had my arms pinned down by her knees and held both hands around my throat seriously squeezing hard. I had to free my arms and loosen her grip to breathe. She tried again later with a pillow and with a headlock. She asked me if I wanted to be murdered. I said no. She said, well too bad, don't fall asleep. She has also threatened me with a knife before, thrown sharp objects that hit my eye and face, and cut my skin with her nails. She hits me all the time in face and groin. I have been bruised all over. I never know when to expect it because she acts normal until she does it. I never fight back or resist because I'm scared she will use it against me. When I try to record with video she stops and pretends like she is hurt. What do I do? We have a kid together and it's only escalating. I called her parents a couple years ago after the knife incident and they told me to be more careful not to make her angry. Every time she hurts me it's always my fault for making her angry. After hurting me she tends to be very loving and affectionate. It hurts my brain. I tried telling my own mom and grandma, they want me to put up with it for the kid. No one cares what's happening to me and I feel so alone. I don't feel safe. This is really scary. Regardless of why she is doing it, this is clearly abuse. The erratic behavior compels you to try to understand her but I think prioritizing your and your kid's safety is paramount here rather than trying to get her, reasoning. Please consider borrowing a phone to call a domestic violence helpline. Do not call from your phone or look up the info on your phone. If you have access to a computer or phone she doesn't have access to, check out the hotline for an interactive safety planning tool. Reach out to friends or family you trust. Not her parents. They are clearly enabling her behavior because they don't want to rock the boat. If you decide to leave, please don't tell her. Leaving is the most dangerous time when someone is acting abusively. I normally take a pretty careful approach when giving advice on here, but, your partner is legitimately troubled. They need psychiatric help, and immediately. What happens when your kid makes her mad? Or she overreacts and is violent to you and them and doesn't stop? This is an acceptable behavior that you should tolerate. It sounds like she doesn't have impulse control combined with anger management issues. A dangerous combination, if she's also unaware of wrongdoing to others, psychopathic or sociopathic behavior. Just know this isn't normal or acceptable and you need to be concerned. Consider the well-being of your child. Good luck. Start documenting the abuse and talk to a lawyer privately. Once you've documented enough to your lawyer's satisfaction, file a police report with their assistance and go for full custody of your child. Edit. Editing this comment so people can upvote the one below noting that choking is the number one indicator of spousal murder. Up I agree you should leave now with child and meet with an attorney ASAP. First of all, get the hell out of there with your kid. It's not safe for you to be there, let alone your kid. If she can do that after being with you for seven years, there's a high chance she might end up doing something to the kid too. Because it's a kid, it can end up making her angry. Don't put yourself and your kid in such a scary and completely unsafe situation. Secondly, she needs serious professional and psychological help because that kind of behavior is not at all normal. Move out of there and file a police report. You're not alone. You and your child's safety is the priority now. Not her reasoning for her erratic actions. Up. According to studies on domestic violence, a partner who chokes you is literally 100% more likely to kill you than a normal abusive partner. This isn't a get a lawyer problem or a record her behavior problem. This is a get out before she kills you problem. This is the scene in the horror movie where you yell at the character who is so obviously going to get themselves killed. Take your kid, leave ASAP, don't say anything, and call the police. She could have killed you and she definitely will if she gets more chances. Start making CPS and police reports now. It will hell you in the custody battle. Put a camera in the bedroom and catch the next time she does it, make a copy and go to the police. This is psychotic chief. I'm so sorry, you're being abused and that's horrible. But you're not alone. You can document the abuse without filming her journal each incident with dates and times, and take photos of your injuries. Use this to speak to a domestic abuse specialist and plan your escape. She may become more violent if she knows you're leaving, so do as much to set yourself up financially and emotionally without her knowledge. Speak to law enforcement, a lawyer about custody. She may need help, possibly medication, but it's not your job to stay and save her. It's your job to save yourself and your kid. Should I, 22F, forgive my sister, 30F. 
In 2019, my parents got into a bad argument which lead my dad to kick my mom and me out the house, cause I was defending her. My older sister insisted we come stay at her place, and about a week later we flew down to stay with her. I could tell almost immediately I wasn't welcomed, she made little snide comments and was super rude over little questions but I said nothing as I was guest and appreciated her taking us in. On the second day of us being there, I went into the kitchen to make lunch for everyone as I asked and everyone was hungry. The next thing I know my sister is charging into the kitchen screaming that I used up two bottles of water, I personally didn't think it was a big deal but apologized and offered to replace them. But that wasn't enough. I left the kitchen while she's still screaming and she followed me, we had a screaming match. And she kicked me out, bear in mind that this was a new city that I'd never been to before. My mom left with me cause she saw my sister being the aggressor but told me I should have ignored it to prevent it from escalating. It's been two years and I haven't spoken to her, I blocked her on everything so she can't contact me. But recently my mom has been telling me she wants to apologize to me but doesn't know how to. I've shut down every discussion about reconciliation and haven't been open to having a conversation with her, but she'll be home for Christmas and I plan to simply ignore her. I guess I want an unbiased opinion on if it's time to move forward or if still having zero contact with her is the best thing. I should also add that this is not the first time she's gotten this way with someone in the family but everyone turns a blind eye to it. If you want to go nuclear, you can gift her two bottles of water for Christmas this year. I mean she invited you over and in just two days treated you like shit and threw you out into a city you know nothing about. Do you really think a simple apology would be enough? I know she's your sister but just view it from a scenario, in which she'd just be a friend. Completely different story. I don't think being a family can make things go forgotten. But I don't think your plan for Christmas will work. You won't be able to ignore her when you're just family. Maybe at a huge gathering with 200 plus people. So it will most definitely turn into a screaming match that will ruin everyone's mood. I mean she can apologize and you can see how you feel about it. But what a weird thing to kick you out over after you had just been kicked out. Personally I'd just be polite for the holiday and go back to ignoring her once she's gone. I wouldn't. I think your sister wants something selfish from you and doesn't mean it. She got angry at you over bottled water and kicked you out. Do what's best for your mental wellness, whether it's forgiving her or cutting her out, but I don't see this apology as being from the goodness of her heart. No. This is a level of hatred that a simple apology can't fix. She convinced you and your mom to fly down and she attempted to make you homeless in a place you didn't know while also separating you from your mother. She basically was using the fact your mother was homeless and in an area she wasn't familiar with to try to get your mother to abandon you. Honestly, your sister doesn't get to decide when or if you should forgive her. You're not obligated to listen to her apology or even acknowledge her. Who tf kicks out their own homeless sister over two bottles of fucking water? Fuck that shit. It's obvious you're not in the mood to deal with her, you, Rosie XXO underscore 5. Forgive her when you're ready, not to appease everyone else. Absolutely not. She's a habitual offender, doesn't deserve your forgiveness. I know that hurts but it's the right thing to do. This is pretty disturbing. Do you have any evidence that your sister has gotten help for her terrible behavior, or is she just a ticking time bomb waiting to explode again? If you don't feel you can trust her, then there's no reason to reconcile, because it could happen again. So, at the very least, make that clear up front. You have no obligation to forgive her, so do what makes you comfortable. I like the suggestion to be civil and then go on ignoring her after the holidays. That could be your best answer, especially if she isn't showing any improvement. Where did you and your mom go after being kicked out by your sister? I hope you are doing well now. Being without a home is so difficult, especially when the people who should help you refuse to do so. My fiancé doesn't respect me or my boundaries. Backstory. We have been together almost two years and got engaged in January 2021. We also lived together. In that time, we have been through a lot including his mom's death and his battle with cancer. He is now in remission but I feel like our relationship is very strained when it comes to communication. When I try to communicate with him he shuts down or dismisses my feelings. There is a lack of boundaries sometimes as well, such as him inviting people over or to stay the night without asking me. During the really stressful times, him going through chemo, I was always there supporting him, which included working two jobs 80 hours a week for a while and keeping up with the house and taking him to his weekly appointments. I pushed myself to be there for him emotionally and physically. 
Because I was always there, I got all the outbursts directed towards me. My friends even witnessed him snapping at me and talking at me. I feel like I did everything I could for him, but never felt fully appreciated. Fast forward to yesterday. I woke up with a fever and was sick and in bed all day, sleeping on and off. I took a sick day from work and just needed to rest. I made that clear to him. So B calls me about five times while I'm asleep. I call him back when I wake up, and he, doesn't ask, but tells me, hey my dad is spending the night with us tonight. I said, no, not tonight please I'm very sick and haven't had time to straighten up. He responds angrily with, I already told him he could, so you want me to tell my dad no? That's exactly what I want. How would you feel if you were sick and I didn't ask but told you my dad was spending the night? Fine, and hangs up. I'm furious at this point. I very rarely have days off and the fact I was sick and have to deal with this only made me more frustrated. So he comes home from work and starts cleaning. I ask what he's doing. He says, cleaning for my dad coming over. At this point, I absolutely lose it. I ended up saying that they could stay at a hotel and that I think he should leave since he can't seem to listen or respect my boundaries. He left to meet his family for dinner and texts me that his dad can't stay anyways. We haven't talked since. Maybe this seems trivial, but his family is notorious for inviting themselves over last minute, and at the worst times. Then they get mad at me for saying no. If they didn't ask me the day of and actually planned it out, I would happily say yes. But the fact that they don't seem to understand boundaries, is so frustrating and disrespectful to me. He has never told his family no, which is a huge issue and why they lack boundaries. He is always quick to defend his family, but not me. When I talk to him about it he gets it but then continues to enable their behavior. I just am tired of being, the BH, for having boundaries. What the heck should I do? I feel emotionally neglected and taken advantage of in our relationship and I'm starting to have second thoughts because it's so much stress. Please listen to those second thoughts. People often focus on some idea they have of, getting married, without actually considering what it is they're signing up for. Forget the wedding. Forget the ring. Forget being able to call yourself, engaged, or, married. Just consider if the life you have now with this person, if your everyday interactions and exchanges, if the way he makes you feel, are these things you want to be permanent features of your life? No, he doesn't respect your boundaries, and I'd say he doesn't really respect you based on what you've written. Are you into spending the rest of your life with someone who doesn't respect you? Don't marry someone who clearly doesn't respect you. It will only get worse. Info. Why would you marry him knowing that you will never be respected by him or his family? So he gets cancer and you do everything for him and you get a cold one day and doesn't care for you. When both grow old together he is probably not going to help you at all. Do you want this future? Don't marry him. So this is the rest of your life, unless you change the situation. You have done everything right set boundaries and enforced them and your fiancé doesn't care. You will have this fight every time his family wants something. Also, you were sick and your fiancé didn't offer you anything he came home and cleaned for his family, and went to dinner with his family. When did he check on you or bring you food or anything for being sick? Time to get out now, and I don't say that lightly. But your fiancé didn't do basic care for you when you were sick and you keep having the same fight about boundaries and he just doesn't care. Do you really want to sign yourself up for a lifetime of this disrespectful behavior? It'll just get worse and you'll be even more stuck than you are now. Your fiancé doesn't respect your boundaries. Then why are you with him? I spent the night at my ex-girlfriend's house. Throw away. Me, 30M, and my current girlfriend, Carly, 27F, have been together for two years. I have three beautiful kids, 6M, 6M, 6F, with my ex-girlfriend, Beth, 29F. Two days ago, Carly decided to go partying with some of her friends from high school. I was just gonna have a chill night at home alone. A couple hours after Carly left, Beth texted me and asked if I could pick up a couple things from the store. Her hands were completely tied with the kids and I was also a lot closer to the store. I went to the store and arrived at her place around 6 p.m. shortly after I got there. Beth came down with a horrible migraine and started vomiting. She looked like she hadn't slept or showered in days, she just looked so weak. All three kids still needed to be fed, bathed and set up for bedtime. The house was also very disorganized and needed a good cleaning. Even though Beth said I could go back home, I insisted that I stay the night and take care of everything. I told her to just take a nice bath and go straight to bed. She ended up having a shower, taking her medication and passing out. 
I fed, bathed and put the kids to bed. I also cleaned the house and set up a place for me to sleep on the couch downstairs. I called Carly multiple times throughout the night and sent her a text explaining the situation. I told her that I would be back home in the morning and not to worry whenever she got back. She never responded to any of my calls or texts, so I went to sleep around 11 p.m. and put my phone on silent. The next morning, Beth thanked me for helping her out so much and I left around 8 a.m. after I got in my car. I saw that I had been bombarded with texts and calls from Carly. She got back home around 2 a.m. and started freaking out when she read my texts. She called me every name in the book and accused me of cheating on her. She even claimed that I just use my kids as an excuse to stay in contact with Beth. She's currently staying at her folks' house and won't respond to my texts. A couple of my friends are on my side, while others are saying that I crossed a boundary. You did the right thing. Your kids come first. Good for you for stepping up and doing the right thing. As for your GF, let her go. You were parenting your children, not drinking beer with your ex. What boundary did you cross, exactly? Dating someone with children usually means there's another parent involved. I think your girlfriend is being incredibly immature about the whole thing. She doesn't trust you, you can't make her trust you. Even if you manage to get her back, her new boundary will involve you not seeing your kids at all. So, she ignored you calls and texts while being out with friends and she thinks you are in the wrong? What if you had an emergency and she just ignored your calls? You were taking care of your kids so your ex could get some sleep while being sick, and bonus points for cleaning up. You tried to tell her and if she would have looked at her phone while out, she could have called you, but she didn't. Crossing boundaries, how? You took care of your kids, and your ex was sick. Being a parent will have problems with people not looking at the right picture. I'm taking you at your word. I'm on your side. Your kids needed you, and you stepped in. You didn't do anything inappropriate with your ex. You were transparent from the start with your current girlfriend. She realizes these kids are gonna be in your life forever, right? Name calling is beneath her. Never okay. She can feel uncomfortable about what happened. She can have an adult discussion about why she feels what she does and talk about boundaries she'd be more comfortable with. But honestly, I'd look at her in a different light now. Dude you helped your kids and explained her the situation beforehand. If she still accuses you of cheating she has serious trust issues. I'm going to assume everything you said is true and give you some kudos for helping her out. Clearly you guys co-parent nicely together. You did a great job conveying what you were doing to your GF. On the other hand, I feel like you should have either taken the kids with you to your place OR when they were knocked out, you should have went home, hopefully they sleep through the night. As a father of four that's what I would have done. There's no way in this reality your girlfriend or any girlfriend would feel comfortable with their, you, boyfriend staying at their ex-house regardless of the situation. In an ideal world this would work. Unfortunately we're all human with insecurities. I would want you to reflect and ask yourself would you be okay if the roles were reversed. Man, this is rough. Personally, I'd never stay at my ex's. Why not grab some clothes and take the kids with you? Sleeping at damn near anyone else's house when you're in a relationship is a no-go, but you ex who you have children with? Hell nah. I raised kids with an ex. I would have simply taken them home with me. I wouldn't like it if an significant other did that to me either.